Hey everybody, welcome to Robust QA. My name is Abhishek Patel, and in this video, I want to talk about timeouts in Playwright. So, in Playwright, we have like five types of timeouts. One is the global timeout, which is like super like the the, the outer timeout. That means if you define the global timeout, you expect your test suite to run within that time. If it does not, then it will be terminated. So let's say if you pass like 60 minutes, you expect your test suite to run within 60 minutes. And then we have a test timeout is 30 seconds. And within test, we have actions like click action, fill action, and then we have a navigation and expect. So by default, this uh, action inherits the test timeout. So action would be 30 seconds, navigation would be 30 seconds. However, expect by default is five seconds. Uh, you cannot have test timeout more than global timeout. Say, similarly, you cannot not have an action timeout more than test timeout or global timeout. Same for the navigation timeout and same for the expect timeout. Okay, so let me go to the our test. And here this test, we have this test. Now, as if you have seen my previous video, you know what this test does is simply clicks on this button. Let me refresh this clicks on this button and it takes 15 seconds for that green message to appear. Okay, so by default, our test takes 30 seconds. So it's going to pass because it will take just 15 seconds, but let me change it. So you can change the timeout either from here. <coughs> so let's say for this particular test, I can change the timeout here. Like set timeout, let me change it to 10 seconds. And now when I run this, you know what's going to happen. The test is going to fail because this click takes 15 seconds. And as you can see, it failed test timeout of 10,000 microseconds exceeded, which is expected, right? And if I remove this, it's going to pass because by default, the test timeout is 30 seconds. So let's say all of your tests here are taking more than 30 seconds, then you can change or increase the test timeout. To do so, you have to simply go to the playwright.config.ts and here just increase the timeout uh, just by writing timeout and 60 seconds. Go back now here and run this test and it will pass. And that timeout propagates for all the tests. So now all the tests will wait for at least 60 seconds before it times out. And as you can see, it passed because this click action took 15 seconds and our timeout, test timeout is 60 seconds, so it passed. Another thing I want to show is that if you use this test.set timeout, then this set timeout take precedence over the timeout defined in the config. So it overrides the config timeout. So when I run this again, it's going to fail because this will just wait for two seconds and it's going to fail, right? As expected. So yeah, so test.set timeout uh, within the function will take precedence over the one defined in the config file. Okay, let's go back to the documentation. And now let's see, um, this is uh, set timeout in the config. Yeah, we already seen this. Set timeout for a single test, we already seen this. Test.slow, we already know if you have seen my previous video. It just like multiplies your default timeout or the timeout in the config by three. So if it is 30 seconds, it will multiply by three. It will be 90 seconds. Change timeout from before each. Okay, let's try this. Test info, okay, yeah, let's try this. So let me go back here and inside the before each, I can use the test info dot set timeout and I'm going to use that test info parameter. So what this does is like test info dot set timeout, test info dot timeout plus 30 seconds. So what we are essentially telling is that we are increasing 30 seconds on this timeout. 
So it will be like 60 seconds plus 30 seconds. So you may come across scenario where for for specific spec file, for particular spec file, you want all your tests to run for more time, like more than the time defined in the uh, config, right? So you want to increase the timeout. But however, for the rest of the spec, you want to keep the 30 second. But so you can do this by this particular method. Let's go back to the documentation and see. Okay, we also have a before all and after all. And then we have a set timeout in the config set expect timeout. So this is how we can set the expect timeout. Let's go back to our playwright config and we already have defined the expect timeout. So as you might have already known, expect timeout by default is five seconds. So this is how you can increase from five seconds to maybe 10 seconds or whatever your desired uh, timeout. And this is how you can define the global timeout. Okay, as we discussed, global timeout is like on the test suite level, so all the spec file should be executed within th this time frame. Otherwise, it will time out, right? And then what do we have? Global timeout and then, yep, that's about it. Yeah, we have an action timeout which is inside the use block. You can use the action timeout. The action timeout is within the use block. Most of the time you don't have to make this configuration unless you are dealing with the flaky test because Playwright has given pretty much good timeout, like default timeout, so it should work. However, if you want to change it, you can refer to the timeout document. That's all in this video. Hopefully uh, this gives you an idea that you have the ability to configure the timeout and make your test robust in case if you are dealing with the flaky test. Thank you very much. See you next time.